Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for December the 15th. I'm Jonathan Kienzler. Today's scripture reading is found in Amos chapters 1 through 3 and Revelation chapter 6. The title of my devotional is How Long? And we're looking at Revelation 6 verse 9, which says, When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. With the opening of the fifth seal, that is Revelation 6-9, we're, we're looking at, a scene and dialogue takes place in heaven where souls of those who had been slain for their faith question the Lord about how long before he avenges their blood. If it's talking about intercession of believers who have died, this would be the only place of the deceased doing so in all of scripture. It's definitely possible that that is what's happening. That seems to be that on the surface, um, what is being said. But often in Revelation, we do need to look below the surface, that things are actually have a symbolic quality even to them, and there might be something else happening. So on the other hand, it's pro- it may be referring to both literal martyrs and those who are currently suffering for Jesus, of whom Jesus himself identifies. For example, Revelation uh, not of just whom Jesus identifies, but John himself identifies. Uh, Revelation 1 verse 9 says, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and testimony of Jesus. And that's really interesting because there we see he's suffering, as we see, he's a fellow partaker in tribulation, which is absolutely suffering because of the word of God and testimony of Jesus, and those words are also found here, because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. So likely that's a very strong link here. The first four seals are a kind of summary or context of all that is yet to come in Revelation. So we see conquest, war, famine, and death. That's all part of it. It's all part of the the church age, I, I would suggest, all part of what even has been happening from, from the beginning as, as well, from the time that sin um, came into the world. And we see that in Revelation 6, 1 to 8. But those under the altar are described in the same way, actually, as Jesus. The word that's used for them in terms of those who had been slain is also used of Jesus as the lamb having been slain in Revelation 5, verse 6. In a very real way, Christians have died with Christ so that we might truly live for him in newness of life. We're to be identified with him, by him, through him. We must also have died with him. Otherwise, we cannot be saved. Romans 6 verses 3 and 4 says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through Christ baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father so we too might walk in newness of life. In other words even as Christ was slain even as Christ died and was buried we too was slain died and buried as well. The fifth seal reminds the reader that believers throughout this period suffer persecution but they are protected under the altar sealed by Jesus blood. And we see that in Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 and 4 and verse 14 um, um, as well. So the sixth seal appears to foreshadow the end where God avenges their blood and the time of God's wrath has come. And that's what happens immediately after, that he's going to act in response to the intercession and prayers of the saints, bringing about justice on the earth. Christians today long for Jesus to come. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 22 says, if anyone does not love the Lord, he is to be accursed. Maranatha, that is, come Lord Jesus. So um, we also recognize that God's patience and kindness are intended to lead people to repentance. The reason why he hasn't come yet is he desires more people to come to him. Romans 2 verse 4 and also 2 Peter 3 9 lay that out. Do your prayers consist of both desiring God to bring judgment on wickedness, and there's nothing wrong with that. We desire God's righteousness, um, God to do away with evil and wickedness and so on. But also do we desire God to bring pe- people to a place of repentance? And in that doing so, it's one of the reasons why there is 
um, why God is patient while he is delaying bringing about the justice that he promises. In spite of suffering that you may endure, do you trust in God's ability to keep you safe? To keep you safe, to bring you through it. He is able to to keep our faith. He is able to keep us in him, to keep us safe until we come to him, no matter what takes place, even through all the four um, the four seals that are even currently at, at work in our world, the conquest, war, famine, uh, and death. We are safe in Christ. He holds us and he will guide us even to the springs of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. You do hear the words of and prayers of your people that we cry out to you for justice. We thank you, Lord, for your great patience, your great kindness, that you will do so in your timing. And Lord, you even wait that more people could come in. And so, Lord, we pray that we would, even as we desire your righteousness, we desire your love your and your salvation to go forth. Let us be people of love, even as we are dedicated to righteousness. In your name we pray. 